Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I've been wondering if I wanted to actually address this topic because it can get so political, but I decided I'm gonna do it anyways, take the politics out of it and just kind of dumb it down because it's kind of a hard concept to understand. Today we are talking about whether or not the IRS is gonna go away. I feel like I got 10, 15, 20 comments this season in my videos talking about, you know, well, forget about taxes, the IRS isn't even gonna be here in a couple of years. And I wanted to finally address this. It's been in the news for some time now, but if you haven't been keeping up or if you just don't understand what's going on, I'm gonna explain it to you in really simple, simple terms. To understand how it all works, you have to understand what a government shutdown is and how that plays into all of this. So we're gonna go through that first. A government shutdown happens when the 12 big bills that we need each year and these bills you know have to be passed by congress in agreement to disperse the money that needs to be used by government agencies so these 12 big ones each year if they don't if they're not settled on if the if the congress doesn't agree on these bills these government agencies don't get the funding they need to operate and do a lot of daily things that you and i really rely on Obviously, because a new year is coming in, they have to decide on these bills at a certain time by these deadlines so that these agencies have enough money to use in the next fiscal year. And in 2023, it happened that there was a lot of extending of these deadlines and they didn't actually get what they needed to get done at the time they needed to get it done. And this is what sparked the whole IRS is shutting down scare. When the term government shutdown is used, I feel like it's so loosely used and people just throw it around that a lot of people don't understand what it means anymore. It's not like the friggin' purge where there's nothing and lights out for the whole government and everyone just runs wild. A government shutdown, there are still essential personnel who have to stay working whether or not they get paid during this time. So law enforcement, air traffic control, people like that are required essential and they have to keep performing their duties and not get paid for it until the government shutdown is over. At the same time, during this time, the government shutdown, those that are not essential, like the person processing passports at uh, the DMV, they, or the government center, they're non-essential. They are very essential in the fact that we want those things to get done, but we're not gonna die if they're not. So for all of you guys out there who are screaming and hoping that the government shuts down to teach other people a lesson or whatever reason you have, it slows all of us down. It cuts down the efficiency of a lot of things that we need to function from day to day. Obviously, a lot of them are luxuries. Traveling is a luxury, but that time you know when you were sitting in line waiting for forever for your passport or whatever you needed to get done done it took so long might be because they're backlogged or you're sitting at home waiting for it to come in the mail might be because those government agencies are backlogged due to a government shutdown in the past or maybe they're maybe they're just backlogged too you know i wouldn't doubt that either but anyways, that is how it all works together. That's how it comes together. That's why we need those things to function the way they do and why so many people are afraid of actual government shutdowns. Moving on to the actual lawmaking process, these bills. Once this bill comes about in Congress, they have to vote on it, get a majority vote, then it goes to the other place, the Senate, which it's kind of tweaked, it's voted on there, and then it comes back for the final touches. And if they still can't agree on it, both Congress and the Senate, it kind of goes kaput and they have to start over on these bills. And so it does take time. It's not just like, you know, we're gonna vote on what we want for dinner and it's fine. These have to be meticulously changed and adjusted to make everyone happy or at least happy enough to vote one specific way and come into agreement on that vote. A lot of times when it can't be completely agreed on, they do these extensions where you know, we're gonna give funding for like this amount of time while we decide on the rest of the bill. And that's what happened last year in 2023. They kept extending these deadlines, kind of giving enough money to function on a daily basis, but not enough to actually approve the whole process and get the bill moved through both Congress and the Senate. Digging into the details now, in 2002, Democrats were able to pass a bill that got offered the IRS $80 billion to use over the next couple of years. And they wanted, to, the IRS wanted to use this money to kind of redo the way they were doing things now and to be more efficient. Republicans, on the other hand, didn't believe this. They didn't think that this was actually going to happen. They thought that they were going to use this money to hire different people to kind of hound more middle class workers, among other things that would not benefit the people in general. 
because Republicans were not in favor of this bill, they wanted to make sure that it wasn't gonna happen. And so last year, they were trying to cut $20 billion out of that original $80 billion from the IRS. And a lot of the people running for the presidency even talked about cutting out the IRS completely and gutting it. And that's where these rumors came from that the IRS isn't gonna be here in a couple years and all that yada, yada, yada. Basically, the bottom line is that Republicans and Democrats were going at it about how much funding the IRS was gonna get and they needed to come to an agreement, but they didn't until a lot later in the fiscal year. In January, although late for the budgeting season, they did come to an agreement that 20 billion would be taken back from that original 80 over the next couple of years and not given to the IRS. And this was mainly to avoid that government shut down because both parties had to finally agree on something that would at least be passed temporarily until the final budget could be approved by everyone. In case you are curious whether or not that money that has been given to the IRS is benefiting anyone, apparently from the IRS, their, their stats, who knows if they're true or not, wait times have decreased from 28 minutes to three minutes on hold whenever you call in and you have questions, which I have called in once. I will say it wasn't you know, super long, it was three or four minutes at max. So maybe that has improved. Alongside this, they've actually collected $160 million worth of back due taxes because they've been able to hire more people to actually focus on those back due taxes. Whether or not that's good for us as the taxpayers because we're being hounded more often or more likely to be hounded on things we haven't paid, it's up to you guys to decide. But at the same time, that money then is given back into the government and we can use it for things that you know are needed so moral of the story is the irs right now is not going away it could potentially go in the away in the future who knows with the way all of this works the irs got 20 billion cut from their budget but they can still go back in the future to congress and ask for more so it's not just an end all you know decision this is just a temporary decision for what was given in the past and obviously at that time that was the current decision so things continually change as the years go on congress continues to vote on bills like this and hopefully we avoid government shutdowns by trying to meet in the middle with all these different people and everyone's priorities hopefully that was easy enough to understand if you have any questions leave them down below otherwise thank you for watching my little um you know congressional update about the status of the irs i hope that if you have not yet completed your tax return which you still have to do because the irs is still standing i've got tons of videos on extensions because at this point you need one i've got tons of videos on how to file your taxes with different vendors and programs online or through software if you have even more detailed questions you wouldn't like to leave down below you can go ahead and email me and i will get back to you as fast as i can Otherwise, good luck and I'll see you in the next video.